Dan, congratulations. What a war and what is probably fight of the night. How did you think about that fight and did it go the way you expected it to go? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I always expect to win. I always, I always make statements like I'm the greatest fighter. So I always, it doesn't matter with knockout submission or three rounds. I always expect to win. But uh, after this fight now, I'm, I'm actually quite emotional, you know, uh, because like I'm just continuing my rise to the top of the, you know, the UFC and. Every day I see my goal getting closer. You know, like when you start in the UFC, you, you know, you're like, oh, I've got this fight and everything's. But right now, I, I don't just see fights. I'm seeing like being a contender and getting the title. And you know, that that's that's what I live for. I know. See, you seem so confident. You're still so young. You're undefeated. What is next for you? Is there anyone that you have in mind next? Yeah, I want to fight Santiago Ponzinibbio. Uh, he's a good fighter, and he's just knocked out, you know, a good fighter in Gunnar Nelson. And you know, he got on the mic and he says he's the best striker. So. You know, my opinion, fans want to see fights like that. You know, I obviously think I'm the best striker, and I know I'm the best striker. He thinks I know, so let's make the fight happen. I don't care where he is in the rankings. I want to make a good fight, and I want to fight him. Darren, there, there are a few times you knocked him down in that fight. Was there any point you thought he was done? Yeah, the elbow. That, that elbow. That elbow would have killed God. I mean, come on. <laughs> that was some elbow that I hopped into it, and I threw all 98 kilos in me. About, I'm about 100 kilos, aren't I? Uh, and, you know, I jumped on, I gave him a few. I, I didn't really ground him, pound because I thought, I thought I've killed that guy. And I thought he's dead. And then I look and he's he's shimmying and I'm going, oh, my God, I'm going to have to work a little bit harder here. And, you know, he recovered. You know, hats off to a guy like that. Yeah, yeah a few times as well in the fight where you, where you kind of came together, shared, shared a bit of respect there. Yeah, of course. Listen, uh, behind all the hype and, you know, the bad talk, whatever fighters do, we're both in there trying to knock each other out and then at the end of it, what are we going to do? We're going to carry on fighting. You know, we we you got to respect fighters. We, we respect each other so much. You don't understand. It's a lot of respect. Even in, in the fight, you know, he's talking to me and I'm just like, oh, yeah, what's happening? You know, let's fight. And it's, it's a good moment. It's 15 minutes of fun. And, uh, well, you called out Santiago yeah. afterwards. Is there anything more to that call out? Did you see his last fight against Gunn? Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, I, ex I, expect, I fully expected Gunnar to win. I really did. I thought, I sat down and I thought, Gunnar's going to win this fight. And he comes out and he completely just annihilated Gunnar. And, you know, he's a good striker. He gets on the mic and he says he's the best striker in the world of eight division. That's not true. I am. Everyone knows it. I am the best striker in the world of eight division. So what are we waiting for? Let's make the fight happen. I'm undefeated. I don't care if I'm not in the top ten. Oh, sorry. I don't care. Let's make that fight happen. Sean Shelby, come on. When, when do you want it? Anytime. T tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. Let's go. Look at me. I'm ready. Let's go. I want the fight. What about Gdansk? Gdansk. Gdansk. It's a card coming up in October. October Poland. October. Yeah, let's go. Let's go and get a bonus. Come on. Afterwards as well. Um, we couldn't quite hear what you were saying, but you said something in Brazil. Uh, Brazil yeah. Uh, in uh, so what, just, what were you saying? Whenever I've been travelled countries, lived in Thailand, lived in Brazil, whatever, I've always been interested in the culture. So if I lived in Rotterdam, I'd be interested in the history and culture. So, you know, while I was at my time in Brazil, most of my friends were older than me and they were all involved in politics. And I just started really getting a, a liking for politics, you know, strangely enough. And Brazil, you know, was in a, a bit of turmoil, you know, the president and the politics and they were robbing, the, the, you know, the people and that. So uh, the president right now and uh, his, like, his boss, should I say, I don't know how to explain it, is like the, the, the Brazilian people don't want them in government and they want this other guy, uh, Bolsonaro, his name is in government for 2018. So I basically just said that I'm supporting it because I'm not Brazilian, am I? So, you know, there's more support than just the Brazilian people. So I just basically said that, you know, just wanted to say it, get off your mind. <laughs> You've got some very vocal supporters as well online. A lot of people are very high on you. What's, what's kind of the message to those people who are supporting you along? Just journey? thank you, thank you. You know, I. Uh, uh, just some, I can't even believe I've got all these cameras on me, you know, I, people ask, sometimes I go out to the shop, people ask me for photos, I know it, it's normal among fighters and cricket players and whatever, but it's just, uh, you know, I grew up in a, you know, a rough area and, and it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's mad, you just have to live in the moment, you can't take nothing for granted, you can't think that this is going to last forever, you can't, you can't think anything, just, just, just enjoy it, I'm just enjoying every minute of my life right now. What were you saying during the fight? He was talking to me, he, he was kicking me and he was going, is that hard? And I was going, oh, no, not really. And he's going, oh, you want some more? And I said, yeah. And then he sort of kicked me and he said, you want some? And then like did that. So I went, you want an elbow? Boom.
the European with the elbow in uh, round one. Uh, on the ground, you said something to the ref. He, was, he, he, he had his hands in my glove. He was holding, I don't know if you could see it, but he, did, he had his hands in my glove. And I said, all right, and then he took it out. And I said to him, he's got his hands on my glove. And he's like, I'm not bothered, but just, I couldn't move my hand. He, he had like, there's like a hole, he, he had his hand in the hole. But it doesn't matter, it's, it's not a big. What uh, would it mean uh, if the UFC bring the uh, in event to Liverpool? To they, they need to. Listen, right, I'm from Team Carbon. Uh, it's known worldwide. We've had seven UFC fighters. We've had Terry Etten, Paul Sass, Paul Kelly, Mark Scanlon, Paul Taylor. Uh, we've had so many fighters in Bellator, and you know they're not fighting no more. And I'm the new face of Team Carbon with with all my training partners, Chris Stringer, Michael Grundy, Tom Aspen, all Mike and Evan. So, you know, the, the Liverpool people are just like the Irish people. You know, you know, if you go to an event like that, there'll be there'll be pints getting thrown. The, the the atmosphere, you will never see an atmosphere like it. So, they need to make the event happen. You know, and now I've got a big name. I'm undefeated. Everyone knows me in Liverpool. That's got to happen. And what would you like to say to your Liverpool fans who are watching you tonight? Just scouters on tour. Scouters on tour.